Are you ready for the largest melt-up in history? <laughs> What's up, everybody? Michael Silva here. You're watching the Stock Market Brief Show. This is the weekly recap. We have so much charts to go over today. We're going to hit every single S&P 500 sector, and we're going to be breaking into the indices, looking at bonds, commodities, etc. Yes, Jerome Powell came out and spoke today. We're not going to get into too much and build around narratives. I like looking at the price action because whatever my narrative, it doesn't really matter because I can't move a market. What matters is how the market interprets that data. All right, we got a lot to talk about. There's going to be timestamps in the description below. If you're new here, welcome to the channel. Subscribe, hit that thumbs up. It really does mean a lot to me. Let's get into today's show. What's up? Let's hop into the dashboard. Let's look at the 11 sectors. First and foremost, energy, 7.45% weak performance. Holy moly, that is for a week to date. XLF, the financial sector, came up behind it. I didn't think financials was going to be that much of a player, actually, up until just a day or two ago. I can't remember exactly the date. And then that's when we saw most of the movement there in, in financials. We're going to be talking about that more in depth here soon. There's three real big things that I'm watching, and that's bonds, currencies, and that's, and then also volatility. Where, where am I going? Ah, where am I going? Worst performing sectors, XLP and XLU. Guess what? This is a risk on type environment right now. Jerome Powell came out. You spoke. Guess what? <laughs> Everyone was so worried about tapered for one day. This week it finished up, I think every single day except for one, it was finishing at all-time high. Yeah, so four out of five trading days, all-time highs. Holy moly. We'll look at the price action of this stuff here soon. If we look at a relative rotation graph, this is important because it might help us form ideas going into next week. And we can see here XLK and XLV. They are in the leading quadrant. If you want to know more about this specific chart, JDK RS ratio was developed by Julius de Kempner from stockcharts.com. And he explains exactly how to read these type of charts. It goes down into the very details of the, the, the fineness of the tail. You can see there's some that are thicker and then some that aren't. And then you can see that the crosshair right here, there's some sectors of the S&P 500 to the left-hand side and to the right-hand side. If you wanna look for the stronger sectors, you wanna be on the right-hand side of this crosshair right here and up to the top right, which is the leading quadrant. So we have technology and XLV, healthcare. And healthcare might prove to be a good sector to follow along with going into next week. Now, energy was the strongest performing sector, and we're still in the very far lagging quadrant because we're looking at a tail length here of four specific weeks, whereas if we nail down to daily, it'd be looking a little bit different. But there's still, you know, this is still a lagging performer um, overall looking at the past four weeks of data. These last week, it, it made a big comeback. So this will probably start changing here very soon if energy can continue its momentum to the upside. Let's take a look at bonds. Now this is where it's getting interesting. So the 10 year down on the day, 2.24%. That helped out the monsters of tech, the Fang Man stocks. All right, and this right here, we haven't cracked this previous high, so we're still doing lower highs. We have a couple higher lows right here. This could be considered a bear flag. We're still channeling within this area. Price percent oscillator is not above zero, and it's starting to histogram starting to curl down here. So this is something to watch. If this breaks down, that means bonds break out. And this right here is a symmetrical triangle from a technical perspective. If we break out of this, this can take us right up there to 156 to 158. I have a position in TLT. It's nothing crazy, uh, but we did catch a bid here. And that is interesting to me. So this is like a risk off type of move. But typically when you see the move strong in bonds, it, let me go back to yields because it makes more sense. It's easier to follow. If the 10 year, the 30 year, these longer term yields head higher, that's typically good for financials. Why is it good for financials? Well, banks, they borrow short term, they lend long term. So when the yields rise, their margin increases, okay? It's pretty easy to track, but when it falls, well, then they typically struggle. And you can see that also if you look at the curves, which I'm not gonna bring up or talk about right now. I just mentioned it. Okay, <clears throat> so 
this bid, it, it confused me today. So I still think that the market's gonna be digesting this information. We'll see what happens here. Is the TLT gonna break out? Don't jump to conclusion that it is. Okay, because financials showed a lot of strength. A lot of various sectors showed strength. We saw some just overall pretty strong breath in the markets today over the news that it just, you know, it was you know, nothing's really changing. Okay, so I think that if we start taking out this high right here, this previous swing high right at around 151, that's gonna be a really good sign for TLT, which could be more of a risk off type of move. Now, if you look at the weekly time frame, you can see here, this was a pretty dramatic week to the downside where it tagged was the 50 week moving average. Then we caught a bid right back up to the 100 day moving average and closed right at that. So if we break out of this little pennant right here, it could, like I said, take us to around 156, and there's a kind of a target zone to 158. That would be that full measured move of this uh, symmetrical triangle, pennant, whatever you wanna call it. One thing to take note is the histogram is kind of fading here, but it is still in bullish context as it's crossing through the zero line. So this is this is still, this is strong right here, it's consolidating. So you don't wanna just ignore this. Another thing that I'm keeping a close eye on is currency. If the dollar goes higher, this, this is like the ultimate, okay, is the market really bullish today or is it really bearish today? And the dollar took a big hit today to the downside, which means, uh, yeah, let's focus on risk on, let's focus on equities. And that's what we saw. We saw equities rip to all time highs, finishing, like I said, at the S&P 500, four out of five days were all time highs last this week. Pretty crazy. And we're still relatively right on this trend line. We haven't fully broke down from this trend that I've been watching. If we break down, we might get a retest, might head lower. Overall, if you just look back to August, we are still trending sideways, which could be forming a base just basing out. And if you look at a weekly time frame, inverse head and shoulders, that is just an inside trading candle. Okay. So that's, it's not much to read into that. It looked like a bearish week, right? Down a percent. All right. But it's in context of breaking out of this neckline. And all this is, is an inside trading candle. So that is something to be very cautious of and just mindful of, because if we start seeing strength and breaking out, consider that to be a risk off move, a flight to safety, you can call it. Now, let's get into some commodities. I'm gonna be on Sunday, I have a sponsor video, so I'm gonna talk about gold and silver on Sunday's video. Um, I'll be talking about just uh, probably the uh, bullish percent index. I'll be talking about multi multiple time frames on gold and then silver as well. And then I'll be talking about the uh, sponsor at the end of that episode. We're gonna talk about CRB first. The commodity index really loves it when the dollar falls, right? You can see here, when the dollar falls, commodities, they rise and they rise rapidly. So this is something to just be mindful of. The CRB index, it's coming right up to the upper range of the Bollinger Band on a very strong move. I wouldn't be surprised to see this potentially next week take a little bit of a breather. If this continues to press up, well, then guess what? The dollar is breaking down from this trend line. That can be, you know, you could take that you know, to the bank. I, if this breaks down, I think that we continue to see, obviously, commodities rip higher. But these type of strong moves, they need a digest. They need to take a little bit of a breather. Now, this is a good sign showing that we have a high, a lower high, up, and guess what? We just cracked that lower high. So this is still trending up. It's still in bullish context. It has advantage over all the, multi, uh, the, the moving averages. We're back above the 20, back above the 50, back at the 100, 200, et cetera. And on top of all of that, we had a bullish crossover here above zero. So is the inflation, reflation trade back on? Well, it's looking good so far. Also, oil, that's another commodity that I wanna talk about. This thing has been ripping. Well, guess what? Energy stocks have been benefiting Couple things to point out here. Look at the Bollinger Bands. They're both contracting, coming within. And if it continues going on like this, going into next week, this upper Bollinger Band will come down to around the 50 day moving average, which is declining. That will act as confluence of resistance. We have this previous swing high, but I would like to see it take out 74. So this strong move, just like we saw here, it's still early. It could still get followed through through downside. So just be mindful, the price percent oscillator crossed over to bullish, but it is still below zero. I wouldn't be just go firing off a bunch of shots here until maybe we get some digestion and, and, and just like consolidation. But the stronger the rally, it's they can get retraced by 
very quickly. It's quite common. So be mindful of that. Let's get into the S&P 500 weekly time frame. Tagging the upper Bollinger Band, still grinding this five EM, five, five weekly EMA. This to me says, okay, we can press a little bit higher and we've seen it extend past, but then it digests for a few weeks after. So, so be mindful of that. Look at volatility. Volatility is still right back right there in the center of the Bollinger Bands. They, can, they expanded slightly as they were contracting, but they look like they're curling back in. So we'll see what takes place here. Volatility is an important one to watch. Then you got the daily time frame. We're cracked right there at the upper range of the daily Bollinger Band and this area of resistance. Not really the place that I'd be going long. All right, I want to see how the week starts out. I wouldn't be surprised to see this take a little bit of a breather, and then we'll see where it goes. Um, you know, the markets they can they can we can see more of a melt up than we've already seen. Uh, just this just constant grind higher. But this resistance line, it's been respected. So you might as well respect it. This is not where you'd want to go long. You'd want to be buying a dip where, well, potentially the 50-day or even the 20-day moving average. And if you look at the 15-minute time frame, this could be a megaphone pattern forming, which can take us right back down to around 446 or potentially fill this gap. Now, what have we been saying on the 15-minute time frame? Well, we've been saying track the five-day moving average. And you can see it came down, bounced, and boom, rallied right through there. It acted as a nice level of support. So we got some resistance right up here at around 451. This trend line, respect that. But so you're seeing it on the daily, the weekly, and the 15 minute time frame. There's resistance, okay? So just be mindful going into next week, there's a lot of resistance. So if you get a lot of like last minute people jumping in, chasing the market, oh, it's good, you know, da 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 da, da and then they're going to get discouraged if it starts turning down. No, we got to look for areas of support. You don't want to just buy at the peak, you want to buy the dips. Um, so where could a dip be? Well, it could be in the middle of this pattern, right at this five-day moving average, or the, even the lower end trend line, potentially even the gap fill. Let's hop into the NASDAQ 100. Also coming into the upper Bollinger Band, still has a little bit more room to run, and above the five-day, five-week moving average. So that still is good. PPO is still bullish context, and it is above zero. Volatility here is coming to the lower end of this um, technical structure, this falling wedge pattern, and you see the lower Bollinger Band right there too. Bollinger Bands are quite contracted, so I wouldn't be too shocked. Now, like this is where it gets interesting, right? So we were looking at the bonds, and we've, we've noticed that when the yields, we go to the yield chart, where are we at? The yield chart, when the yields rise, that puts pressure on big Tech, where is the yields chart? Oh my goodness, I am losing it. Come on here. There we go. <laughs> when the yields rise, that puts pressure, at the least the rate at which they rise, puts pressure on big tech. And this big move right here in February but did put pressure on big tech stocks. All right, and now we're starting to see it slowly rise and, you know, kind of chop around. But if this falls, that could be a good sign for tech. Could be a good sign for the NASDAQ 100. And we're starting to see, like I said, volatility come into this range. That can act as a level of support. I wouldn't be too shocked to see this act as support and then start heading up intra-week right around to the 20 range. And if that's the case, then what can the bond market be doing? Well, I'm not 100% sure. It's too hard to call that kind of correlation out. But I would think that, hey, if that's the case, this might just be floating around and chopping more within this channel. It's not going to go anywhere too extravagant next week. It's going to take more time. All right, enough on that. Let's look at the daily time frame. The daily time frame, we broke down through this trend I was tracking. We <laughs> hit the lower Bollinger Band and just about the 50-day moving average, and we ripped to the upside. Now we're right there at the upper range of the daily Bollinger Band on top of that in confluence with this resistance that we broke out to. So you know, the risk, there's more risk of going long here than there is reward. Can it go higher? Of course, it can press higher. Just know where you're buying. I would much rather see it pull back in order to buy a specific dip. And like like we've been watching the 15-minute time frame, we broke out. We said, okay, it might pull down to the five-day moving average or even this or even this gap fill, pull down to the five-day moving average. We ripped today from this point. This could also be a megaphone pattern. Could be a rising wedge right here. So look for a potential pull back back into the five-day moving average or even potentially back into this 372 range going into next week. And if it goes even deeper, the gap fill and possibly into the center back within to this channel. So this could be, ooh, we 
in the queue's potential little um, bear trap or bull trap, I should say, sorry. PMO indicator also at a negative divergence, same with the queues on the 15 minute time frame. Not exactly the place that I want to just jump in long on all of this. Like I said, this is uh, there are some interesting charts in the conclusion section um, that I posted also on Twitter that just leads me to believe like either this is a sick joke or the market is prepping for just a monster freaking move to the upside. Russell 2000 weekly time frame. Small caps, they killed it today up five percent for the week price percent oscillator still bearish trend here but it is above zero very strong week i would have liked to see it gap down and then see more strength but it gapped up and it just basically that was the low the, the opening point of this candle was the low and it closed at its high that is very bullish we've seen that right here this was that was a really bullish move right we gapped down we followed through that pierced right through that candle we saw a little bit of hesitation there and we see some strength getting back into this middle of the range okay there's still a lot of work to do here for iwm and remember we were talking about financials if the tlt starts breaking out well 20 percent of the iwm is financials so something's wrong there so it's either going to be the TLT that's going to start heading lower and we're going to start seeing more strength here or it's going to flip over and we're going to see the TLT very strong and this is going to go down or sorry I forget where I started but IDBM we're going to see some strength financial see some strength and the TLT is going to fall down to its lower range of that channel that symmetrical triangle that we pointed out. If we look at the RV axis, the volatility for the Russell, and we're looking at weekly time frames here, volatility is contracting right there in the center of the Bollinger Bands. Okay, we have support and confluence right here, right at around 20 to 21. So be mindful of that. If we come down there, that you know the market could press higher, and then all of a sudden it acts as support right in this technical construct, and then we start moving up higher. All right, so everything is it's setting up for a big risk off type of move but it hasn't happened yet as the markets grind higher it's just something you want to be aware of now as the markets at all-time highs i mean just look at volatility like markets at all-time highs but this is still relatively high it's interesting iwm daily time frame we broke back above this little middle channel but look where we are upper bollinger band there we had some really strong volume that's a good sign uh, price percent oscillator is definitely spreading its wings here. It's bullish looking, but it's still below zero at this particular point in time. RSI is back above 50. This to me says we can get some follow through, but just be mindful that we have this area of resistance here. We're at the upper range of the bond band, and we could potentially see a strong week. Everyone gets excited, then it reverses, creates a shooting star candle, and we continue to just trade range bound. Okay, so that's always a possibility too, but this is some, some serious strength coming into small caps. Now let's hop into the 15 minute time frame. We broke, look at this, <laughs> uh, that's hilarious. Like, look at this day, Jeez. As soon as the news came out, uh, the, the speech, the Fed speech, as soon as it came out, like this just came up and just went completely straight up vertical. This boom, and then it filled the gap, this gap, right? It was gray last time we looked and it filled that gap, came right back within it. Now we're looking at this channel as an area of support. So if we pull back into 224, that can act as a potential long or good risk to reward, or you can wait to see if it digests a little bit more and re-tags the five day moving average, which could put us in confluence with this previous resistance. So a pullback to around 223 might make for a good entry and good risk to reward trade, something to watch out for. Let's hop into the uh, sectors in the S&P 500 and various other sectors too that are important. I'm gonna to try to run through these quicker because there's a lot of different charts I'm going through. IYT, this is what we need to watch for, a break above these previous highs. If that's the case, as we're putting in higher lows, it's, you know, could be a bear pennant, right? But if we start seeing some strength, we might have a little bit of, a little bit of resistance right there, the middle range Bollinger Band at 262. But we've been, like I said, bulls are making progress to the upside. We're back above the weekly five EMA. That could be a very, very positive sign for transports. You want to see more volume come in and it go to the upside. You don't want to see more volume come in and go to the downside because then it'd be breaking down and that would be something to watch out for. But this right here, it's an inside trading week. It's an intra, no, that was outside a little bit, yeah, but an inside trading week. So if we start breaking above to the upside, 
Heck, this could take us to around 265 to 270, which could make a good, good move for individual transportation stocks. Semiconductors, very strong week, opened at its basically low point for the week and went straight up, right tagging the upper weekly Bollinger Band. Price percent oscillator looks like it wants to cross over to bullish. This to me looks really good. If you actually take a measured move, if you just draw a horizontal line from this high to this high and cut it through to around 260 and then just draw this trend line up, I mean, that takes us around 30 points higher from that breakout. So 260, 70, 80, 90, it could take us to 290 to 300 on the semiconductor. So we had this hammer candle. Now we're seeing some strength. What you want to see is follow through, but follow through has been very difficult to find here lately. Uh, biotech, IBB, this is the weekly time frame. We're up into this area of resistance right here. If we start breaking out, that can be a good sign. But just note that there is some supply up in these zones. But I, you know, this this looks strong to me. It's been trending up high. We're above the weekly five EMA. We have some room from the upper Bollinger Band. Something to watch for. XLK, XLK breaking out to all time highs for the week. You can see here above the weekly five EMA. We're actually disconnected from it. So um, this is not exactly like I said. It wouldn't be the exact area that I'd want to go long. I'd want to see what can take place. I wouldn't imagine. I, I I could see us getting some follow through here, but just be mindful that there's more risk you know, then there is reward if you go long right here. Um, we'll go into a couple sectors here soon um, that sh that seem to me like a good, good, um, good setup. XLI Industrials up 2.23% for the week. Price percent oscillator still heading down. Histograms kind of ticking up and it's still above zero. So that's a good sign. Came into the 20 week um, moving average and Bollinger Bands are contracting here pretty tightly. Contraction can lead to an expansion. So I'd be looking for a break above 106 to potentially get some sort of push higher. And I'd like to see that match with some volume. So looks like a good setup, but we're still, we're still not quite there yet. XLY consumer discretionary is bouncing from this previous week, which was pretty rough. And what did we talk about consumer discretionary? It looked like it was getting ready to kind of rock a little bit. Why? Well, because a big portion of that is Amazon, a big portion of that is Tesla, a big portion of that is Home Depot, and those stocks were taking beatings. And it looked like they were getting a little bit too oversold. Now we're starting to see some strength. So this to me, if we get above 182.50, we can press a little bit higher back into this area of resistance at about 185. So there's still room to go here in consumer discretionary going into next week. Consumer, I'm sorry, communication services, XLC. And we're right there at the upper weekly Bollinger Band at about 85. Yes, we can press past the upper Bollinger Bands, but it's like I said, I want to find setups that have good risk to reward, and I don't necessarily want to just hit long at an upper Bollinger Band. I just, I just, I don't prefer that. XLB materials. This can be one to watch. Trend line is down. We saw some strength. This was a almost an inside trading week. It could be. I can't quite see it. Um, yeah, but it's been going sideways, right? Big move up. Then we saw some digestion. We saw it come right back up. I'm looking for a break above these this previous high right here. So 86, 80, I'd say 86.50. And then that might press us right back into the upper range of the Bollinger Band. And that could be breaking out of this downsloping trend line, which could be a very good sign there for materials. So materials are definitely something you want to pay attention to going into next week. XLF, financials, upper range of the Bollinger Band. I measured this out on the daily time frame. It could take us to around 40, but just be mindful, upper Bollinger Band, that's not where I, like I said, it's not where I want to necessarily go long. Um, can it go higher? Obviously, it's just not my personal type of setup. Real estate, real estate, hammer candle, right? It was pretty gnarly looking, but then it got right back up to the weekly five EMA. This to me, looks like it can have some room to potentially move next week. However, the price percent oscillator crossed over that's bearish. So you're going to be, you know, the wind's not at your back right here on real estate. However, you know, we'll see, we'll see what takes place. There's another sector that I'm quite interested in energy here. Um, energy gapped up, ripped up higher back above the weekly five EMA. It's been one, two, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven weeks since we've actually closed above there. And now we're back above there. Let's see if we can do that again. Like I said, though, keep in mind the chart of oil, which we talked about earlier. We have a weekly 20 moving average just overhead, and that's acted as an area of resistance. That's right about 51. Okay. So that can act as a strong area of resistance, right? We had this candle right there. We have that was support. 
We broke down hard. We had resistance, 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 and then we have this weekly moving average starting to slope somewhat down here. Price percent oscillator is also pointing down, so it's not something that I'm just going to get super excited about. Now, if we start getting a weekly close above it, that would that would change the tune for me on energy stocks. Still got a lot of work to do though. XLP. This could be you know these three weeks right here, not the greatest looking. Um, evening star, I believe they call this candlestick formation. Morning star, evening star, I can't remember, but we came into the upper Bollinger Band, we squeezed a little bit higher, and then look at, guess what? Up, oh, it rolled back down, closed right below the five weekly EMA. I, you know, it's not bearish until it's confirmed. So if we start closing the week below 71, that will look a little bit more bearish, but keep in mind, we also at 70.50, so I'd say getting below back this 20 day moving average, 20 week moving average would be more bearish there for consumer staples. This could be a potential opportunity, right? If, I mean, it's in a bullish context. If it pulls back, we might be able to catch it on the upside. Um, we've looked at many other charts where consumer staples looks like it's it's been way underperforming from a relative basis to the SPY. And there's going to come a time where all of a sudden it starts picking up, but that's more of a risk off type move. And the market's not really showing that at this particular point in time. Let's look at utilities, very bearish type candle. We got a way above the upper Bollinger Band, right? and then it reverted. Look where it tagged, weekly five EMA. This is a pretty bearish looking candle. Let's see if it gets some follow through. If not, utilities, I still have a long position on. I'd be looking for a stop below the weekly five EMA. And then also on the daily time frame, the 20 period moving average can um, just below that can act as a good stop there too. And then healthcare. This is the sector that I'm very interested going into next week in various healthcare stocks. Why? Well, first off, we talked about the relative rotation chart at the early portion of the show. It's in the leading quadrant. The wind is at your back right there. And if you just look at the price action of the chart, this to me came into the upper Bollinger Band. Now it's digesting, but it's still above the weekly five EMA. So if we get to the weekly five EMA, I'd be looking for long positions there. Even if we get just below it slightly, I don't think that we'll close the week below it. If we do, then you know my my I'll change my tune just a little bit. Price percent oscillator still bullish context. Histograms dying just just off a little bit, and RSI is above seventy, so it is quote unquote overbought, but it is. You know, we've seen overbought stay overbought for a very long time. So the trend is still up. This to me looks like a good opportunity. Let's hop into some indicators. I'm going along here. XVG broke out of this downsloping trend line. Still, it is diverging, right? It hasn't hit an all time high, whereas the S&P 500 has, but that is a good development so far. Let's see if it holds back above the 50 day moving average. SPX over TLT ratio, negative divergence. You know, we're looking at the daily time frame. It's putting in lower lows, sorry, lower highs and this is putting in a higher high sometimes these negative divergences play out where the s p 500 rolls over something to watch out for niad negative divergence this is an advanced decline line still not the greatest sign until that changes another thing that's not the greatest sign going into just next week is that is very overbought right so this is this is pretty darn frothy and typically what you get these big overextended readings after a pullback but we didn't really quite get that like for example right here so we dipped Boom, very overextended reading. Then we got the overextended reading, okay? Because it ripped, but we like, this was a low reading. We didn't dip, uh, no dip to be seen here really. And then we ripped up to the upside. So, uh, you know, uh, that's, that's a tough one because to me that says that we're not gonna get that momentum going into Monday like many people might think, especially as price actions just tagging these upper areas of confluence of resistance. S&P 500% of stocks above the 200-day moving average still diverging, so that's a divergence to continue to watch. Another interesting one is the NYSE high-low. Look at this. This thing has just been falling down. Meanwhile, the price action's, you know, point or two, you know, from the all-time high. So that, to me, is a big divergence that we need to be mindful of as well. Market is very weird. Try, like To have the market continue to just rip higher by having, like, six stocks seven to 10 stocks go higher and higher. There's going to come a time where that this is going to be known as the biggest stealth bear market. And it's going to rip even higher because all these small stocks all of a sudden start performing like boom, 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 boom. And you get this big just movement to the upside. Okay. Or the indices, they're going to catch to the downside. It's not going to surprise anybody, but most people aren't going to be positioned for that. So they're just going to wait it out or they'll buy the dip and then they'll keep on getting you know, crushed. And then they'll get discouraged at the time that they should be ready to start buying. 
that's typically what markets do. So we'll see if that's the case in the weeks, months. I'm not gonna say years. I, I think we're I think we're gonna see a five, a ten percent correction, you know, within a year. I think it's gonna come. If it doesn't, I give up. Nizi McClellan summation, summation index. It's back above zero. Like I said here, as I do the Jay Powell little laughing face. You know, that's a negative thing to see market breadth like this go down below zero. It's even worse when you match it with the NIMOT, the, the McClellan oscillator, when that goes to a minus 300 reading and we weren't quite there yet. Um, but you know, like what, what, who cares, right? That's like a little laughing Jay Pal face. Does it, does it really matter? No, nope, nothing really matters. <laughs> nothing really matters. But what's interesting here is it's still diverging. So like I said, it's, the markets look like they're getting just ready to melt up. We'll talk here in the conclusion section. That's coming up. But, you know, you don't want to just push, push, push because you want to be ready or prepared or no specific levels for if we do get a big panic spike or if there is a risk off type of move, right? You just need to be diligent, tactical. Let's get into the conclusion. All right. So this is where it gets interesting to me about the melt up phase. Momentum stocks. They're breaking out. This is just the PDP, okay? This is a momentum ETF. So I'm gonna be looking at various momentum stocks to see continuation. Volume's a little lackluster, okay? But over here, we've seen some spikes, some spikes, some spikes. So maybe that picks up next week. We're above the upper Bollinger Band. Bollinger Bands were pretty tightly contracted. So this could be a Bollinger Band squeeze. Melt up, perhaps, okay? Another thing, high beta, also potentially gearing up. Volume spike, volume spike, uh, piercing pattern type candle here getting some follow through, some big, you know, strong move here. And then also look how tight the contraction of the Bollinger Bands are, could lead to a Bollinger Band squeeze. Now, does this mean I'm gonna buy the SPHB? Not necessarily, but if you go into the holdings, I might be able to find various setups. That's what I might be just doing, just saying. And if we break that, that down trend line, this is the weekly time frame, but that could be a very good sign. So there's various setups here that are looking like they're primed to rip. Another thing, Kathy might be fueling up her spaceship. The possibility of this, still far away of breaking the neckline, but an inverse head and shoulders on the ARC ETF. If we do do this, and that is a full measured move as these Bollinger Bands are contracting tightly, that's going to probably take us right back up to the all-time highs for this innovation ETF. So that is something to be very aware of because, you know, this whole, you know, debacle between Kathy Woods and Michael Berry where he's shorting ARC, he has a pretty large position. I don't know if it's that large. I think his Tesla short position is even bigger. But, but actually, I don't know. It's, I'm pretty sure Tesla is part of the ARK innovation. I got to look at all the holdings. I know it's public knowledge, but I know that he has a Tesla short, pretty large Tesla short position, um, and then also, obviously, an ARK um, uh, put position or something like that. But this, to me, could be an inverse head and shoulders, crack that neckline, which is... You know, breaking a close a weekly close above 135 134 that to me says hello watch out this thing could be ripping up even higher that's all i got for you on today's episode everybody yes it was long sorry about that sorry i'm acting all over the place um like i said going into next week it looks like there's a we're running into an area of resistance i wouldn't be surprised to see you know, some some digestion take place, but there's other various aspects that say, holy moly, if this strength picks up, there's going to be a large move. It could be a very large move to the upside. I'm looking at healthcare going into next week and some various other momentum and high beta stocks. That's all I got for you, everybody. Have a wonderful weekend.